Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Welcome everyone to The Artful Undress. I am your host, Kira, and I am here with the beautiful Polina, promoter of the arts. Hello, Kira. Uh, welcome everybody, all the T-Radio V fans out there. And the fans we're collecting. And the fans we're collecting. Thank you for your support. Yes, we, we really love you already. And we're going to love you more after this episode because this episode is actually all about the love. And that is because I'm, I'm just very excited because I have one of the most important people I've ever known in my life here with us today. Oh, ah, oh boy, <laughs> blushing. <laughs> the, the amazing Scott Witchman. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, Scott. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. And, and we, we love him so much that we're holding him captive for the entire show. Uh, so he'll be with us the whole time and then afterward. We might never let him go. My yeah. ankles are bound. Oh, my God. I <laughs> know. Actually, they are. Yeah. <laughs> it worked really well. <laughs> so, um, Scott, we're going to talk about you, obviously, the whole way through. But I'm going to talk about you a lot. And oh. as I was saying before the show, Scott has the one major flaw um, that he, he doesn't take compliments. And so um, he's, he's okay with the fact that I'm going to gush. <laughs> and <laughs> so, basically, I don't even know how to introduce you, like I just said. But I'll, I'll try to start. The show is on performance art today, or at least mostly on performance art, and you are a lifelong performance artist of like, uh, I don't even know, of great proportion, as well as an incredible comedian, filmmaker, videographer, inventor, technological wizard, and of course my favorite, a novelist, and one of the best, if not the best writer I have ever personally known. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy, now what? Should you get up and take a bow? <laughs> I don't know if I deserve all that, but thank you. Thank you. Which is illustrating my point. He deflected. Deflect. Yeah, I did. I did. Look over there. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Okay. So, since everyone, I, I was so prepared for this. Okay. This is probably the only moment on the show that I'm going to be prepared. But I was prepared. And so, I wanted to just illustrate really quickly before Scott gets all, Scotch gets all funny, because he's going to, and it's going to blow us all away, um, exactly why I wanted him specifically for a show about performance art. And to show mostly the deeper side of what we're going to talk about today, despite the fact that it's going to be completely hilarious. So <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to quote you because this was so beautiful. This is something that Scott actually, um, and I'm going to call you Scott every once in a while. I'm really sorry. I grew up with Scott. Dash, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I drink Scott. You can call me anything you want. <laughs> oh, that's a good, that's good. Um, so, so this is actually something that you sent to me earlier um, this week, and it was about performance art, so I wanted to share it um, with our audience because I was just, I was transformed in this one, you literally took me away in this one section of this email, which is exactly what you do, and I became your audience, which is ironic because of what this is going to say. Okay, here I go. One thing I love is walking through Pershing Square downtown and watching mentally ill homeless going about their business. If you simply shift your perspective and say, these people are artists, everything they do becomes incredible, from their carts to the way they walk to the structures they build. They become the artist edge walkers who are in between and therefore terrifying in the very best way. I become the audience and set them into a piece by changing my mental context around them. They become beautiful. Or rather, this shift lets me see the beauty that is them. That's amazing. Uh, and they're actually the art and the artist. Right, right. It's incredible. And, and when asked, this is, it, this is basically how you started to explain performance art to me, which is absolutely magnificent <laughs> through the madness element 
No, no, through the fact that you can take anything. A shift of perspective. A shift of perspective. Right. You know what's interesting is I um, I was reading the comments of that Yoko Ono video yeah. from 1965, the original one, right. and the comments, some of them were all about it, but most of them were like, this is art? What do you mean this is art? How can this be art? Which right. was weird to me. Right. Um, that's... I think that I, I think if 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 a performance is getting that kind of reaction, it's it's uh, good. <laughs> it, it is good. It is good. I mean, you're always going to have those people who are who are just they're closed to, to anything new. But um, I mean, speaking of madness, speaking of performance art, to me, a, a, a performance artist, and we can get into definitions if you want. A, a really good performance art piece is one that um, it, it's it's so brand new. It's not like anything that you've ever seen. It's hard to categorize. It, it defies categorization and. And it's it, it operates in, in a in a way that is if you read if you're into Lacan or the unconscious mind it's it's operating on a symbolic level so it 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 transcends ordinary language which I mean if you're looking at homeless people or if you're talking about madness um, you know for them their unconscious mind is much closer to the surface so we see it more readily it, you know if someone watches a Yoko Ono video or they go to a gallery um, it's you know, you have to put yourself into the sort of art context and appreciate what you're seeing. And, and that's why, uh, to me, performance art is so powerful is, is because it, it has the ability to uh, uh, bypass the sort of linguistic controls that we put on ourselves. And we take in, you know, through smells, through, uh, you know, the visual aspects, all of these these symbols that are kind of sort of operate and transform us in ways that we don't even know until later on. You know, six months down the line, something could still be affecting you. And uh, I mean, we can get into that more later, but it's it doesn't just operate on audiences. It also operates on the performer. And I've had a couple of experiences I can share with you uh, where where I felt like I've I've kind of gone mad. And um, if there's there's, you know, sh shamans, you know, witch doctors, that kind of thing, they 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 work very much in the unconscious realm mm -hmm. and they work very much symbolically and the things that they do, the rituals that they that they uh, they share with a patient who they're working on. It that stuff is working symbolically. Your your conscious mind, um, you know, has all these filters. It's and your unconscious mind doesn't really understand ordinary language. Exactly. So to to get through that firewall, you have to work symbolically. And uh, and and at those moments where you tap into that as a performer, it's so powerful. And you you all all of a sudden you just you reach that ecstatic state. Um, and you know it, you don't need drugs you don't need drumming you don't need dance um, all those you could incorporate those things and when you hit that point you're suddenly out of control and you feel like you're going mad you know I think that goes with all arts but especially performance art because you're you're it you're doing it in a, a I don't know in all ways physical way I guess physical emotional you're you're it you're the art right but I think we all go through that as artists right we get consumed and god what a beautiful place to be that craziness <laughs> And you're consumed on stage. Right. I mean, that's what's so that's scary. Beautiful. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you're actually, that's something like I, I would not do because it, this is too scary for me. <laughs> but to do that, to expose yourself and get to that embodiment level of the art in front of who knows how many people. And, and speaking of which, do you think this might be a good time to play that reel, that compilation? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I know this is um, on the next segment, order. but the, the um, Scott's reel would be great if you could play that. Because in, as he's speaking so beautifully, and I'm so in love with the fact that you're speaking this way, um, I think the audience is going to have no idea that this level of <laughs> can sincerity go, can go can this go. way. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so, um. The birdie in the middle. Hey, that was my bra.
I think okay. that says it all. <laughs> so, that's, so that's really what we're dealing with. <laughs> You've been duped. <laughs> exactly. And but, but that is like the, the, you know, all of the polarities that I love. That's what makes you so magnificent. <laughs> oh, because yeah. you have this sensitivity that's like unleashed internally, right? And you share it with this inner circle. And then it allows you somehow uh, to have the sensitivity to not show any of that and to entertain the world <laughs> through humor well th those i mean to be fair those were sort of the loud moments that you just saw there in, in a lot of the pieces there are quiet moments the more intimate moments leading you, up to yeah, <laughs> where you kind of pull you're pulling the audience in 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 so that you know they th you you establish this empathy and sympathy between yourself and them so that i mean it's kind of it, it's sort of akin to when you go to the movies you know you sit down and all of a sudden the world disappears and two hours later you know it's like wow it's 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 dark outside now where have i been for the last two years you know my prayer for any performance art piece is, is that at the end of that eight minutes or that 10 minutes or whatever the audience has the same feeling except that um you know they are maybe somehow transformed or really moved um, in, in a real way, you know, not just oh, I, you know, I walked out of this sort of two-dimensional or you know, three-dimensional uh, film that I just watched, but instead, they're you know, I'm moving in and out of the audience physically, so um, you know, they're having a real experience, just like if if they were at home or if they were at work or if they were on the street. It's hopefully it's a real experience, but one that's super tuned to uh, to change them. You know, that that's kind of the ulterior motive that's underneath all of that. So you're actually bringing the art, they become the artist with you. Right. And and right. that's it's a dance that you're in with them. Right. So the goal is that participation. Yeah. And yeah. every time I've ever seen you do anything, you are really good at getting that reaction. <laughs> because you know, you know the unconscious part of that. You know the symbology to, to, to make that happen. I, I'm just so excited. <laughs> I have to say I had all these questions planned for the first segment, but you already are answering them without prompting. So. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Excellent. this is this is so wonderful. We're actually being played out by uh, Sasha Evans. Sasha Evans, yes, and we'll we'll talk about her a little more after. Right now, we will toast. we will toast to the first segment. Yes. yes, and we'll see everybody after the break yes. again. <laughs> They were ordinary friends They saw ordinary flowers On their ordinary... Hello, T Radio V. Hello, for us. Hi, guys. My name is Steve Ranazizi. My name is Mary Elizabeth Ellis. My name is Katie Azelton. You're watching TV on the radio, but you're not watching it, you're listening to it, because radio on TV. Hi, T Radio V. <laughs> Keep that radio going inside that television set. I love T Radio V. Trust her. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. What's up, man? It's your boy, it's Real and Chance, man. Back again, T Radio V.com, T Radio V LA. Real and Chance are back, only on T Radio V. Talking to you, talking to Real and Chance, T Radio V LA. What's up? No, I'm 36 years old, sweetie. All I said was you're talking to Rillin' Chance, who we got on the line, you act like I said, bend over. Am I looking that smooth? <laughs> Little bit of butter, baby. Damn. Damn it, Tuesday? Well, you better call me every Thursday. <laughs> He's an idiot. Pure idiot. It's Rillin' Chance, Thursdays, 5 p.m. on T Radio V. T Radio V. Yeah, I think what I do with Zev is, is trolling. For sure. Zev For sure. hates more than anything. His Hill tweets on me. And then I'll retweet it right away. Because <laughs> he wants it to like wait and then have its day. It's Zev's a fun guy to troll. You should, everybody, I'm gonna should try trolling that. Zev. I oh, highly recommend idea. it. I'm pretty sure the Lakers would be a way to troll Zev. That would be a good yeah. way to troll Zev. Oh, yeah. By the way, we're at 855 Meet your death, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get digital. Wednesday, 6 p.m. on T Radio V LA. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I've decided to multitask. Uh, I can talk a little bit about Sasha Evans, who is singing this beautiful song, and she's our feature musician um, this week. Uh, Sasha, SashaEvans.com is where you can find her and again I'll talk about her a little bit more later.
This is much harder than I thought it was going to be. I'm really sorry, studio, if I destroy you. Okay, I did it. That was beautiful. Nobody lost an eye. Uh, uh. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I, so have I love that you have booze on this show. This is... Uh, is there any other way? <laughs> oh my god! It reminds me of my grandmother in Vogue Star because she was a uh, she was a bartender in Vegas. Oh, yeah. you know what? That's not good. That's. Do <laughs> 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 you see how easy uh, that is? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay, well, um, well, now that we've had that moment, uh, and I you know what would come. Okay. Um, ice I'm, ice, I'm baby. You want to put it in there? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, I feel bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll put it in my boot. Let's put oh, it in my boot. That's, I was waiting for you to do that, but I couldn't actually put it in your boot because that would be wrong. We brought... These are performance art props that, that are on the table right now. We have a boot. We have uh, we have string. What do you do with these things, I would like to know, besides the obvious? <laughs> uh, you know, you just... The sock's inside out, though. I, I know. It's I'm, I'm one of those people. Okay. It's... You know, you just... You start you start playing with props like when you when you're working on a new piece, um, you uh, you just you you try to um, use props in no, in non conventional ways like you know here I am I'm just you know I'm I'm right now I'm playing with tape it's black tape uh, you know it, it makes things black uh, do you, do you like my eyebrows look eyebrow before you hello hi, hi. Oh. very nice to meet <laughs> you know, you just start working with with objects, you know, a I was thinking I couldn't see your eyebrows anymore. <laughs> but Invisibrow. Invisibrow. <laughs> and I was thinking how convenient because I just spilled champagne all over my face and the table. <laughs> so I'm really glad this sock is it's, it, it's great. We have a performance artist here <laughs> <laughs> to take a take away Don't wipe it spotlight. off. It's a, it's a nice prop. Uh, just let it drip. Let it drip? That's, that would be the performance well, I thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, well, you did what with the model? <laughs> <laughs> what oh is God. the bottle? I'm actually slipping because it, it's somehow made its way to my elbows yeah. even okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so i might need a refill yeah. um but other than that i wanted to backtrack because um scott was so you know um, concerned with the fact that many people out there might not know what you know the history of performance art and what it is and of course my response was i don't want to waste any time on that because yeah, you don't yeah uh, but we should i guess so my question for you yes before i got distracted by your brilliance <laughs> was that and I the tape <laughs> <laughs> and, and the champagne in my lap um, can you talk to us a little about performance art history too and how it can free us from any limits that we have not only as performers or artists but as the audience um, yeah so you know performance art so you have when, when you when somebody says performance art the the public sometimes thinks performing arts they think, uh. oh, you're talking about opera, or you're talking about drama, or you're talking about music, or or circus. But that performing arts is a generic term. Performance art is a specific art form. Um, I mean, super quick. It has its roots in uh, in Dada in the 19 teens, in surrealism in the 60s and 50s and 60s. That's when it really sort of began to emerge as an as an art form. Artists came up with this idea: Hey, I don't have to just paint. I don't have to just do sculpture. I can do an act. And so performance art, it, which in the 60s it was called hap uh, happenings, in the 70s it became performance art as we know it today, um, and basically you only need three things. You have the performer, you have the audience, and you have something that the performer does. In the, in the 50s and 60s people would go to a gallery and they, they would watch someone do something. And, that, and because of the context of art, that was, you know, that was art. And it's... Uh, it, it, it's also the, the other, I guess, caveat I should, I should throw out there is that it's not it's not an act that would fall easily into any other art category, any other type of performance category. So if you go go out there and, you know on stage and you just do a pirouette and walk off, you know, uh, hey, that's a dance that falls into the category of dance. So what you're every single performance piece that you do, it's almost like you're inventing a brand new art form, you know. So it's. It's it's hard to compare performance art pieces to each other because there's no standard rubric. Rubric. I mean, there there are sort of uh, aesthetic rules like things you want to you know interact with the audience. You know, there are certain techniques that you can sort of develop over time. But generally, there there are no rules. So it's like an inherent originality in every single piece, every single performance, and every single reaction of every single audience member. Right. Right. Is there any type of a formula like like a like a movie or a a book you know to to climax and beyond? 
<laughs> um, there are tons of books on performance art. No, no, no. What I mean is, oh. is it is it similar in that sense? Do you build build the momentum and then climax and then end it, or is it no rules? You just do whatever you want. It depends on. The, I mean, if a, a piece can be anywhere from there have been pieces that have literally been milliseconds long, and there have been pieces that have lasted for years. So mm. it depends on if you want to try to ramp. If you want to try to have sort of dramatic variations, you know, throughout the course of a piece, yeah. um, you know, the same, you can apply the sort of same dramatic rules that you get in stage and, and, and that sort of thing, except for the fact that you have no fourth wall. You're not playing a character. You're not acting necessarily, unless acting is part of your performance art piece, but it's you acting. So there's there's yeah. that sort of degree of separation there. I mean, it's, and freedom. It's always you, you, you up there on on stage, or not, maybe not on stage. Maybe in, in, a, in an you know in an alley. You can do site specific work like that. You know, it could, you could do a piece right here, and you would take uh, you know incorporate different you know objects, people, uh, the air, the sounds, whatever's around you into the piece that you're doing. So your audience doesn't necessarily have to know that they're your audience. Um, well, typically. Typically, they do. I mean, you can. There have been. Or you get arrested. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing. You got to be careful. I, yeah, I've, I've almost been arrested a yeah, couple yeah, of times. I'm I sure. mean, like a homeless guy who's pooping on the on the ground outside. That's disgusting, <laughs> right? But like, slide a canvas underneath them, and it becomes. Oh my, that's a that's a that's a, gutter, a work of art. Guttural critique of cultural excess, right there. You know, I've got I've got pee on two walls at home. I would love poop on the third. Can, tell me, can you vomit? Because that would be just be amazing. That would be fabulous. But you asked about changing people, right? Yeah. Um, there's a famous story how in, I think, 1966, there was this guy, John Lennon. He was single. He was going to this art gallery because in those days, you went to an art gallery because often afterward, there'd be an orgy. And he was really looking for this orgy, right? So he goes there. And, and London was like just, people were just depressed. And, and, and nihilism was everywhere. And he walks in, and there's this piece going on by this woman, Yoko Ono. And uh, the piece involved the audience, one by one, climbing this ladder to look at the ceiling. And on the ceiling, written in little tiny letters, was the word yes. And he climbs this ladder, and it was just like such an affirmation. It just, it like, it blew his LSD fueled mind. And that's how he and Yoko got together. That piece, I mean, it, it sort of changed him. It, it allowed him to see things from a slightly so, so new perf perspective. So performance art changed John Lennon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Or, or at least gave him a no, 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 glimpse no, no. In, yeah, no. into another way of, of, of seeing the world, of being, you know, um, and so, yeah, I do think it has that ability to, uh, uh, you know, exorcise things, you know, problems that you have. In, in my novel that is coming out in the spring, um, these two characters, uh, Hank and Larry, they're these performance artists, and they use performance art on a daily basis to work out their problems. At one point, for example, Hank comes home and he finds that um, his wife is is been hanging out, you know, <laughs> so, hanging out a little too much with this guy who sells rugs, and he can't take it. So he goes outside and he does this like weird little dance, and then he he he, he melts this tin of wax, which then he like massages into his hair, you know, and then he rips it off as as like symbolically ripping off the hair of this this rug salesman who who ironically also had a toupee. So it's like he's pulling off a part of himself. He's pulling off his marriage. He's pulling off the hair of this 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 cad, you know, who slept with his wife, and um, you know, it just it just allowed him to get all of his pain out. And so, you know, often when you're creating pieces, you're you're not thinking rationally all the time. You're not thinking logically. You're thinking symbolically. Like, how do these things go together? And in doing that, all of that is informed by the world around you. And so because of that, because of current events, because of the arts, because of whatever you have going on, when you do your piece, it resonates with people because you've sucked in all these symbols from the world around you and they recognize we, they recognize those symbols on an unconscious level. And you can actually uh, make a difference doing exactly that. You have a very powerful tool there, <laughs> Mr. <Just> Scotch. <laughs> well, I think if you think about that, that's incredible. Yeah, you can actually change change the minds of many people by doing just that, pulling those heartstrings and. Well, and it totally reminded me of this thing I saw today, and 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 a question I was going to ask you, but this amazing post on Banksy and this truck that he has driving around New York City. Have you seen the truck? Yeah. Do you do you think that's real, really Banksy? Because I'm not so sure. It's hard to say. It's I think say. it's somebody playing off of... I'm sorry. I just... I really think it's somebody playing off Banksy. Yeah. I don't see him doing that. Well, but I love it. I, I do, too. I do, too. But... 
What do you think? <laughs> I, I don't know. If he doesn't claim it, it's really hard to say. You know, he's he's so shadowy. It's you don't always know. But that's and but that's also even if someone else is doing it and not claiming it. Right. That's sort of performance art. No, right? Am yeah. I missing it? it? I mean, it's making a statement. I mean, there's I feel like there's this line between some of these, you know, art forms that we're going to talk about with regard to these installations and then taking it to the next level, which is actualizing it and actually considering the audience and right. now it's performance art. Right. Well, and the and the baby crying at the end. Oh my god. <laughs> I cried. I saw it and I cried. I didn't know it what really to do. It really proves I the was, point. Oh my <laughs> gosh, and I was sitting with someone and he didn't really like he kind of looked at me weird and it was probably because I was crying and not because he didn't get it and I said look at the symbology here and I'm a stuffed animal freak right <laughs> and I'm thinking oh my gosh and this is so bad but everyone who knows me knows where I'm coming from I mean seriously when we commit acts of bigotry against people who we have now victimized they are to most people in their lives, that little stuffed animal. Right. They are a little child that is innocent and good and was born just like you were. Right. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was oh, perfect. You know, speaking of that, I just watched the, uh, this kind of crazy, but I'm a Snoop Dogg fan. <laughs> <laughs> I love and I, I just watched the, the documentary on Snoop Dogg, and that's basically what he said. He said, um, you know, those, um, the rappers and all that, they have such a, such a bad rap. Um, <laughs> But they, they didn't choose to be born in that element. That's where they were born, and that's how they had to make do with it. It's not like they wanted to. And if people put that into perspective, it's like, yeah, it wasn't a choice. It's not a choice to be, you know, born in the ghetto around all of that. You had to, you had to survive, and right. you're just a little kid. What choice do you have? You you but don't. it really... Yeah. We didn't choose to be born in Fresno or oh, grow up in God Fresno. God help us. The high school, we went to, high school we went to actually had, teen pregnancy was such a problem. We actually had a nursery in our high school <laughs> with 15 babies and at least half of them looked like the gym teacher. <laughs> so uh, how do you, you have to undo that somehow. Performance artists. And every way. year they changed the V to a K before the first day of school. <laughs> yeah. and so we went to Hooker High. Hooker High Hooker school. High. Yeah. Yeah, we loved Herbert, it. Herbert, Herbert. <laughs> no, but I mean, this is so, because uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was about something you had written, which is fighting commercialism. And I, I love that you put your artwork, everyone in performance art, they have to, they put their artwork into context, into the time, and but there, there's a purpose, they're fighting something. Right, right. And, and some performance artists, you know, they do reach a sort of echelon of, of uh, fame and money. I mean, Laurie Anderson is a great example, Mike Kelly. Um, who passed away, but I mean, he was a very famous, you know, performance artist, and also, you know, he also did static works. Uh, Chris Burden is another guy. He in the '70s he became famous. He was going to UC Irvine, I think, getting in his, his MFA, and um, he went into a gallery and had himself shot in the arm, you know, with a gun, um, and uh, and now he's super famous. But yeah, so they're both ends of the spectrum. You can get famous doing performance art, but you just have to be really careful that you don't let it change you. You know, for the worst. And you probably have to have that not as your goal in order for it not to change you enough right. to actually be still good at it. Or you could do a performance art piece about getting famous. That would <laughs> <laughs> I guess there is that option. <laughs> and even if you get famous, you're probably not going to make money. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, it's, so hard, it's hard to collect performance art. So it's literally <laughs> <You can't>. art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to think about it. That. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but it's literally art for art's sake. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. I mean... Uh, art for art's sake, should we toast to that? Yeah, let's do We should toast. Say. And again, this is Sasha Evans. And the violinist on this, who is incredible, is Doug Miller. Mm. And this is when it gets going. <gasps> okay, we're going to toast. Let's get married now, babies. We'll do it right here on this spot. Oh, let's get married now, babies. Can't wait to see the look on my father's face when he finds three on the floor and another in the door. Well, I'm Yo, what's up? This is your boy Kyle Master, and you're checking out T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V. Hello, T Radio V. Love you guys. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. I heard you missed us. We're back. I'm Ricky Rackman. I'm Grant Reynolds. And I'm Tiny Fuso. This is Fork in the Road. Yeah, he's a drummer of one of the greatest punk rock bands of all time, TSOL. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he had the Mohawk. He has no more Mohawk. Take your hat off. It needs to be. Oh, my goodness. Full metal jacket. Oh. 
Why is it boom? It it's always been, been, been bam. bam the whole time. I thought bam was stupid, bam. but now it's like boom goes the dynamite. And Meryl Lagasse uh, owns bam, and their people contacted me, and <laughs> I don't cook. <laughs> Check us out live on Tuesday nights, 7 o'clock. Watch Fork in the, the Road on T Radio V. Radio V. We got Scott and Brad from Slater's 5050. What's up, you guys? Uh, there was one thing I wanted to bring up, which was the pancake, the Holy fried chicken yeah. pancakes. pancakes. Yeah. 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 What we did is we do two buttermilk pancakes at the bottom, three <laughs> pieces of fried chicken, the homemade country bacon infused gravy. gravy, and then we put, of course, bacon on top of that, fried egg, another pancake on top of that, and then real maple <laughs> syrup just drowning the whole thing. You guys, I must say, are pretty fit for eating all this stuff. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, appreciate it. So you guys yeah. don't eat your food. <laughs> Pork and amazing. Mondays, 5 p.m. on T Radio V LA. This is Soledad O'Brien. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's Nick Cannon. Hey, everybody, it's your girl Linnea. Hi, I'm Daphne Williams, and you're loving it on T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V, let's get it. Radio V. Welcome to Paris in LA. Let me just preface this by saying I know way too much about Thanksgiving the stars that I ever thought I wanted to or want to. Victor Ortiz! This is good. This is like tips if you want to get into Victor's pants, ladies. You're snoozing right now? Yeah, and I am what? literally on heroin. Right now. <laughs> oh my god! I think it's Academy Award winner Dustin Hoffman. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah, somebody do it. I don't hang out with losers. That's why I got you guys. Because you're winners. Paris in L.A., Thursdays at 1 p.m. on T-Radio V. T-Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. When you can do it all on your own. Welcome back to the Artful Undress. This music is really fabulous and really loud. You know, it reminds me of the Roaring Twenties. Isn't it amazing? It's so cool, so uppity. It doesn't start that way, though. Is that why you said it reminded you of me? It's uppity, but you don't start that way? <laughs> First segment. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> trying to understand. Okay, so uh, we realized on break that we don't have enough time, actually that there isn't enough time in the universe to um, actually touch the surface of everything that you have to share. So I'm going to speed it up. <laughs> can, exactly. we just, can we just show salad first? Oh my god, yes! Okay, <laughs> salad. Here okay. we go. I this don't know what favorite. it's going to play. I, I, but, oh. I keep laughing at this. I've seen it uh, 10 million times. Hey. <gasps> Here it is. Hi. I'm What's good. Up? How's it? How's it doing? I'm doing. I'm doing good. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw you did er, did earlier. Yeah. Over there. Yeah, it's busy. Uh-huh. I'm so hungry. You hungry? Yeah, I'm really hungry. What do you want to get? We should get something. Yeah. What do you want to eat? Uh, spaghetti. Yeah. Uh, potato salad. Uh, How about a salad? salad? Regular salad. Regular salad. Yeah. Well, what kind now? Like spinach, or spinach salad, or maybe a wedge. A wedge, I like a wedge. <laughs> blue cheese. Yeah, blue cheese. Dressing. Blue cheese. I like blue cheese. Onions. Yeah, onions. And Where do you want to get it? We could go to Sizzler. Yeah, Sizzler. Yeah. You want to go to Sizzler for salad? Yeah, Sizzler for salad. Sizzler's yeah, good. Yeah, we could go to Sizzler. You. Do you have? I don't have. You don't have any money. I don't have any money. I don't have any money. We could, oh. what, we could steal a salad from Sizzler. I'm not gonna steal it. I'll steal it. We could <laughs> put it in something. Like get a, a box and sneak it out, but then they'll know. I'll put it in my pants. <laughs> we could put it in my pants. I'll put a salad in my pants. Can we eat it out of your pants? Yeah, eat it out of my pants. Yeah. With, Put the croutons in there. Yeah, put the croutons in there. And the cheese. Put the cheese, lettuce, and raisins. The bacon. I don't want raisins. You can have raisins. You're half. Be, be careful mm. it doesn't fall out the bottom, though. It won't fall out the bottom. I'll eat it before it gets to the bottom. Just yeah. eat all the salad out of your pants. Eat it. Yeah. Eat it. Eat salad right out of your pants. Eat it. Okay. Just tromp down. Just tromp all the salad down. They won't even notice. We eat it so fast. Just put it in your pants. Be and careful eat the salad with the fork. Fast. 
I won't. I won't even use a fork. You won't? No, because I don't want to stab your cock. Oh no. I don't want to stab your cock. Oh wow. With a fork. I'll just use my mouth. Okay. Use my mouth, and I'll be careful. I won't use my teeth. Croutons. I'll eat the croutons. Eat the lettuce. Eat the bacon. I'll be cheese. real careful. Yeah, get that blue cheese dressing. Oh god. We don't even need dressing. We could just have semen dressing. Oh wow. Yeah, I'll just shove it all in my mouth. All at once. Just put it on I like purple. it. Oh my god. The lettuce is so good. Mm, tastes so good. Mm, blue cheese. That's good. Blue cheese, bacon, mm, in all my the mouth. meat. Uh, I love yeah, bacon. Mm, full buffet salad right in your pants and in my mouth. This is mm, so good. Yeah. Um, What's for dessert? We want pie. We want grandma's pie. Oh, we I want love grandma's pie. cherry pie with whipped cream on top and whipped cream I'll eat cherry it. on top. Put I my love cherry grandma's. on top. I'll eat your cherry. Eat your mouth out of your pants. Swallow it. Swallow it. Swallow it. It's so swallow, good. It's so swallow, good. Swallow, cherry on top, swallow. cherry on top, so cherry on top. Oh, God, no fork, careful with the teeth. Oh, oh grandma. Grandma's pie, so grandma's good. cherry pie. So good. Cherry, yeah. mm. <sighs> hey guys, can we go? <laughs> Tim's getting impatient. Come on, let's go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can okay. go. Yeah, we're gonna go. All we're right. full. Here we go. Bye. You're such an idiot! Oh my god, it's so free. It never gets less funny. It gets my stomach hurt. <laughs> Just saying. My tummy muscles are totally tense. <laughs> Seriously, right? It's the funniest, funniest stuff I've ever that seen. That was uh, what, the, what the Hippo, our little performance god, troupe, performance funny. arty troupe. So, did you come up with th this piece? Uh, Natalie, the the actress that you see, um, she and I came up with that together, just kind of, you know, messing around on stage. <laughs> messing around <laughs> on stage. <laughs> Performance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, just, you know, we, we just have this process where we just kind of start um, talking off the tops of our heads and seeing well, it works. The, improvising, seeing where the story goes, and it just... Uh, the salad thing just started to emerge. God, that's so funny. Her voice just kills me. She's got that. Her voice is incredible. She def she should be doing voiceover or something. She's hilarious. She really is. Yeah, oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah. I, I, and then the way her face doesn't move, and I don't even understand it. I was like, uh, uh. Okay, so we're going to, we can obsess about salad for the rest of the show. Oh but we don't have time. Okay, um, 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 I'm you can, Everybody out there, you can you can find salad on YouTube. Check it out. Exactly. It's, and show all your friends. It's funny stuff. <laughs> and, and it's not the only one we have left. Hopefully we'll no. have time to show more. But I'm thinking since we're running out of time, we should talk naked. Let's talk naked. Yeah. Yeah. Not get. That is the show, right? That yeah. is the show. So we, yeah. we are going to get to, of course, we always end up getting to at some point. What? Nudity? And, and the, the Specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to take off my... Who's going to say it first? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> So let's talk nudity versus naked because um, I love hearing your take on everything. Oh, okay, um, so nude, uh, you know, both of these, th both words come from the Latin nudus. And, uh, you know, nude basically means unclothed, right? Naked um, can mean that because it comes from the same root world word, but it also, uh, it also means to be uh, vulnerable or to be uh, stripped bare. It has that, that secondary meaning. And in, in the world of performance art, and I think in art in general, um, there, there's kind of an interesting relationship between the two. And if, if, you, if you think about like Adam and Eve, for example, right? They're both nude the entire time until you know, the fall. And then all of a sudden they realize, oh my gosh, we're vulnerable now. We're naked, right? Um, you get the same thing with censorship. People you know, look at a particular piece and depending on on their own existing vulnerability, they may they may decide how how sort of naked they feel in in response to the nudity that they're observing. In the, specifically in performance art, nudity is nudity is like a costume. When you when you walk out on stage, you might as well be wearing um, a, you know an outfit because it has culturally in the performance art world it has become um, I won't I won't say cliche, but definitely a frequently used tool. And it can be a cliche. You know, you do have those pieces where, you know, uh, uh, you know, hey, I'm naked for naked sake. You know, I'm, I'm showing you my truth because I'm naked. And uh, look at my breasts. You know, that definitely happens. And that's not the most powerful kind of performance art. It's, it's where the nudity is an integral part of what's happening. Or you're nude because you want to show uh, nakedness either in yourself or evoke it in your audience. 
the other thing about about nudity that's is so beautiful is that there was this great essay written by this um, this German uh, theorist uh, Walter Benjamin in in the 30s, and he talks about how. Um, he talks about originality and how with the advent of reproduction, mechanical reproduction, of creating copies of things, we're sort of taking away the original aura that was once associated with a piece that you would have to go to Paris to see, mm -hmm. or go to Germany to see, or go to a museum to see. And um, the thing about nudity is that in the performance art mindset, a recording of something is not the same as the real thing, especially in the case of nudity. I mean, you have to be there in order, in order to be truly affected by the nudity for it to be reflected in your own sort of nakedness and your own vulnerability for that sort of exchange of feeling to be there. That's why the, that's why porn is so hilarious because you have the most nude people in the world but they are the least naked. Yeah. If, you know, the difference is nude is, you know, unclothing of the body, nakedness is an unclothing of the mind. So the, the interesting relationship between the two. Very interesting. I have chills all over my body because <laughs> the people, the different guests or potential guests I've spoken with, absolutely not one of them has had that explanation. Uh, have you had this no, experience? No, this, yeah, this is great ex explanation. And it's really moving. And and it's it's everything that I mean. It's it's so much more, but it's also everything that we're about with regard to our dream of original art. Right. And, and the energy that is put into an original right. and the artist that is put into the original. And then it might just be one audience member that is now a part of that and you're connecting with them and performance art has to do this right. to be successful. Unfortunately, uh, every other artist in America right now doesn't seem to think they have to do this anymore. They can, <laughs> you know, use a print and that I don't, it, it doesn't not, have the same not, effect. Not Georgia Dubin. <laughs> Not George Dubin. <laughs> and, and that's what's, I mean, it's like amazing. that, that def And then here goes the music and I'm distracted. Oh my God, say something funny. <laughs> Shit. Oh. <laughs> <He's quiet. laughs> I, I, I hope our listeners really heard your explanation of nude and naked. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to write it down. So We should talk about your piece, some of your work when you come back. Okay, and maybe maybe now's a good time to say, will you come back? <laughs> sure. <laughs> like next time and the time after, the time after that and the time after oh, that. Oh, you guys. Yeah. I'd rather you were blind so that you might see T Radio V. Welcome to Absolutely Jason Stewart. My guest today is probably one of the most famous comedians. It's the Russell Peters. Jerry O'Connell was the other guest who was also a friend of mine. Oh wow. And then the music. Jerry O'Connell's from Stand By Me, the gorgeous guy that turned and he was the chubby guy. Right, the turned gorgeous. And now he's tall and skinny and I always make fun of him. Not tall that. and skinny, he's tall and buff and gorgeous. Well, I don't know about that. Yes, you do. He's a tall, good-looking kid. He's gorgeous. <laughs> Say but it. That's your style. Uh, you know, uh, I'm friends with both him and his wife, so I'd rather look at his wife, to be <laughs> honest with you. It's absolutely Jason Stewart, Tuesdays at noon, only on T Radio V. T Radio V. What did you play opposite Andy and Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played. I played. I played a news anchor and. You played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is, is that who played my sister? You played his wife, Denise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you played his wife. <laughs> yeah. So what's wrong with that, Eliza? Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's got a great range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. on T Radio V. Do a job. We're gonna go up on these roofs. I got, I got excited. Yeah, you came out military, you all you know, <laughs> yeah. swaggered out, man. I don't know. Gloves, <laughs> on, gloves on, so he didn't leave any fingerprints. That's it. We'll show the photos. That's one of my favorite photos. Actually, you I took, took that, that one. one. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Oh, <laughs> when Michael Keaton says you can get anywhere with a positive attitude and a clipboard. That's it. Well, we didn't even have the clipboard. We had him for Mission Impossible. He was uh, Tom Cruise's stunt <laughs> double. We were sixty-nine. I thought the old lady in the elevator. She's like, policia. <laughs> yeah, she spotted <laughs> the Delta Bravo show Friday 7 to 9 p.m. on T Radio V. Oh, you got 
be mad, mad now. now. You idiots. Of all places on this table what? to put this belt. These toys are important. Put it in front of the most important part of the show. Oh, my car gets hit that. for every episode. That'd be a great recording. Well, it's it's going that. to now. Yeah. They're all here because they think I'm going to take my I'm clothes off. Johnny in the face, <laughs> and then we're going to watch Jen like strip. Oh, that's I love it. How am I? That, thank you, Eddie. The T-Radio B. Rest in the world. <laughs> and kick ass. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. No way. I say the world ain't paved in gold, it's paved in gray. So I'd rather be blind than choose a friend based on the face. Yes, I would rather you were blind so that you might see one day. The lyrics of Sasha's work are so beautiful. It's, it's, I feel like we're interrupting a poem. <laughs> Maybe you should share her website right now. Um, yeah, can we just go to um, SashaEvans.com? And Sasha Evans just completed a new album. It's called Peculiar that you can find on iTunes and on her website, SashaEvans.com. And she's played with violinist Doug Miller, which is in a lot of these songs. And she's also playing with the Moon Police. Um, their upcoming shows, October 23rd at, I don't even know the how to say that word, Le- Lestis in San Diego. And November 17th, the Cabrillo Playhouse in San Clemente. Um, she also does a duet with her boyfriend, Joe Harner, called Lover's Quarrel, San Clemente at the Cellar and Divine Food and Wine, and F- Divine Food and Wine in Dana Point Harbor. And thank you, Sasha. This is such a treat to have your music. And we're going to play her full song of Fuck That at the end of the segment. <laughs> <laughs> she was waiting the whole episode to say <laughs> that <laughs> word. <laughs> okay, we wanted to play one more thing because one of my favorite oh, yeah? things about Scott is that... Um, and I, I keep saying the word brilliant, which is ridiculous because it's like the greatest understatement of my lifetime to call you brilliant. <laughs> oh because, God. I mean, it's, it's, it's so beyond. Everything you do is intelligent and creative at the same time on some kind of astronomical <laughs> level. And one of the things you do, of course, is invent things. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you were, what was it, middle school, inventing 100-proof alcohol and building computers when... Thank do- you for that. <laughs> oh, my God. And, like, what was it, DOS? I don't even know. I mean, like, you would think he invented the first Mac. I mean, that's the level of intelligence <laughs> we're dealing with. But uh, actually only invented software about Mac <laughs> and PCs. So, like, all that you don't even ever talk about. But I feel like everything is connected connected to that creativity and this is just one clip from one of his many 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 businesses that he has invented through time it's on meth coffee speaking of which i thought i was having a heart attack (laughs) when i had my first cup of meth coffee and this is addicted called addicted that was my heart meth in the coffee <laughs> for our viewers. <laughs> Just says to Kathy. I believe. Well, and, and, well, we'll ask Scotch, but um, an energy supplement. An energy supplement? Yes. Ha <laughs> ha 
Oh uh, my God. Uh, okay. so wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many different levels. Somehow I had negated that last five seconds <laughs> from my memory. That. I didn't forget about the that. The booty bump, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really cute. Okay, yeah, and just for our viewers, especially my conservative um, friends, uh, yeah, there's no meth in meth no coffee. Meth. But you actually, and especially at that time period, there was this love of very strong Arabic coffee, especially in from my culture, I certainly loved it. And then all of these energy supplements. So he did all the research, and, and because he's a chemist along with everything else, <laughs> and shut me up if I'm like <laughs> totally screwing this up, but put the two together in this coffee that is insane. It's not around anymore, but when it was, I mean, it was, yeah, super ca caffeinated Arabica beans mixed with yerba mate oil, and it just, because of the name, it, it made a big splash the media, like CNN and 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 uh, you know, name a magazine. It was it, Maxim mm -hmm. picked it up. It was it became um, NPR has like this trivia show that they have, and it became one of the trivia questions. And um, it it was also banned. Like certain states don't allow drug paraphernalia named uh, products right. in the state. So the state of Illinois, their attorney general banned it outright from the state. Which is is real. that the middle? It's definitely in the middle. It is the middle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was great for sales everywhere else because it was like, oh my God, they, they banned it. Well, I got to try this now. <laughs> Super. Oh my God. Please ban me. Ban me. Yeah. It's not around anymore again, but um, it was fun for its time. It may come back. We may bring it back. Maybe we should get banned too. Yeah, you should. So that we get more publicity. Publicity? Go. Yeah. Or, or so we're more brilliant? Yeah. Get yourself arrested. That works. For I'm sure. A I don't know if I like that. No. No. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. We have so much left to talk about, and I don't know which is first, so I don't want to miss the the novel. Okay. Okay. The novel. Okay. Want, Let's talk about the novel. Oh, okay. So yeah, I have a novel coming out in the spring. It's uh. Did you already mention that? I don't. Did I? <laughs> did I? <laughs> For the fifth time. Um, it's about uh, the title of it is two performance artists kidnap their boss and do things with him. And um, it is there. He is, and he's. You can see he's. Uh, he's in cellophane. He's kind of nude. Yeah, he's wearing a skirt that he made out of cellophane because uh, he. Uh, these two performance artists, you know, they. Um, well, you can tell from the title, they kidnap him because um, he's he's like this Bill Gates type character, and they throw him into a chain link fence with the goal of turning him into a performance artist against his will. So they have to figure out like what makes this guy tick. How can we brainwash a billionaire into becoming like a wacky honey globbing performer? And uh, and w when he's inside the cage, they do strip him naked, and um, and so he's you know he's freaking out of course because you know he's he's never been in a situation like this much kidnapped. You don't have a turkey baster, do you? I'm just yeah. there, there's no turkey baster in there. <laughs> okay. No turkeys were harmed in the making of this. Movie. No, but uh, he makes a skirt, and um, you know it's it's all about his transformation and these two performers how they use like performance art in their daily lives to like. To, to fix themselves and to fix the world around them, how they apply it to this guy and how he learns those lessons. So yeah, it's coming out in the spring. If you go to twoperformanceartist.com, um, you, can, you, can, uh, you can find out about the book and we have a video trailer that's gonna be coming out in the e at the end of this month. I'm super excited about it. The footage is looking awesome. That of course, Oh yeah, we haven't done. seen that yet, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and, and Scotch does everything. So um, that's one more thing. And you know what? <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to ask more questions, but what? it just, it got me again. One of the questions, the one I didn't, wasn't going to send you was about how performance art really has, has performance art saved you in a way? Definitely. And can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, the, my my mentor. I was in college. I, uh, you know, he he was a longtime performance artist. He was his hey heyday or the beginning of his heyday was in the seventies. Karen Finley, Laurie Anderson, a lot of kind of who big names in the performance art world were just kind of like getting their start then. And he was in that group. He was also a painter. John White is his name. John M. White, and um, he just. What saved me, I think, was, I mean, I wasn't really having any problems in my life at the time, except for just regular school student mm -hmm. things, but he just, his working method, his w way of looking at the world and anything that you encounter, making art out of it mm -hmm. and trying to incorporate anything and everything into your art, including your own artwork. So, like, he would, he would watch our pieces and then diagram them diagram them, sort of just making his own sort of creative notes about what he was watching or the way that someone's arm was up. And he would use those as a score for creating his own future performances. And just that idea of sort of bringing in all the grist into your mill. And, and not only that, but anytime you mess up, you just incorporate that mess up 
into the performance mm-hmm. itself. Which I mean, right there, that's alone. That is a gem. You can't, you can never mess up if if that's your philosophy, because it just that's just that's just part of the flow. That's part of the piece. And so and and so making messes just you know that that's kind of you know it's the art. It, it, it is the art. It's it's life in the art. It's 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 art in the life. Um, and uh, yeah, you never get lost that way. So if we had to define your life, your life is your art. You are <laughs> like a living embodiment of art and the thought that goes into it and that's behind it. It's a beautiful mess. It's a beautiful mess. I love that. <laughs> I'm, art is Good art is a beautiful mess. <laughs> it is, and you are a beautiful human being. Oh, and thank, thank you. you so, so much for being one thank of our Thank you for guests. having me. This has been great. Yes, thank you, thank you. And we already want you to come back. <laughs> And we thank all of our beautiful listeners, and we can't wait to see you again next week on the Artful Undress. And I know um, you're. Were you going to mention anything at the end here? I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know if we have time, but I'll say it oh, really the quick. Performances Sunday, November seventeenth, performing with my troupe, Wet the Hippo at Sketch Melt at Meltdown Comics on Sunset. These are where he's going to be performing. Wednesday, um, November twentieth, a solo storytelling tel- set at the Trunk Show in Hollywood at the Lillian Theater. Uh, uh, Friday, December 6th, solo performance art piece at the 5x5x5 show, Sylvia White Gallery Ventura. So check him out at those places. And on his website. And on his website. And I, I have no idea how much time we have left, but we love you and we love Scott. <laughs> and, and let's toast <laughs> to the art address. Yay! No way I say the world ain't paved in gold You are watching to Radio Me Radio and TV